if they can reach us from outer space, they're probably type 2, or more than likely type 3. At that point, they already have mastered starships. Type 3, you can access the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the energy at which space and time become unstable. In other words, wormholes become possible for a type 3 civilization. You take out a calculator and calculate. Growing at 3% per year, a modest growth in energy, how long before we become type 3? In a hundred years, we'll be type 1. In a few thousand years, we'll be type 2. In about a hundred thousand years, we'll be type 3. A hundred thousand years is nothing, nothing on a cosmic scale. By the time you're type 3, you have access to the Planck energy. Space and time become unstable. Bubbles begin to form. You can heat up space so that bubbles begin to form. These bubbles are gateways, gateways to other universes. Now, are they going to be dangerous? Well, I think we have not too much to fear from them because what do they want? Do they want to plunder our resources? There are lots of dead planets out there like Mars that they can plunder at will. So I think that there's really no reason for them to plunder the Earth because there's plenty of uninhabited planets out there to plunder. And for the most part, what do we have to offer them? If you're going to a forest and you meet the, the deer and the squirrels, do you talk to the squirrels? Initially, yeah, but then you lose interest because they don't talk back to you. So I think that on that scale, if they can reach us from another star, they're already type two or more than likely type three. When we physicists look in outer space for alien life, we don't look for little green men. We look for type 1, type 2, and type 3 civilizations. A type 1 civilization has harnessed the planetary power. They control earthquakes, the weather, volcanoes. They have cities on the ocean. Anything planetary, they control. That's type 1. A type 2 civilization is stellar. They've exhausted the power of a planet and they get their energy directly from their mother star. They just don't get a suntan on a weekend, they use solar flares. They use the power of the sun itself to energize their huge machines. Eventually they exhaust the power of a star and they go galactic. They harness the power of billions of stars within a galaxy. Now for example, Buck Rogers would correspond to a type one civilization, a planetary civilization, Star Trek and the Federation of Planets, who have colonized a few star systems, will correspond to a Type II system. And the Empire of Star Wars would correspond to a Type III civilization. Now, what are we on this scale? We are Type Zero. We don't even rate on this scale. We get our energy from, not from stars or galaxies, we get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. But we can calculate when we will attain type 1 status in about a hundred years. And I am privileged to be alive in the most important era in the history of the human race, the transition from type 0 to type 1. And so this transition is perhaps the most important transition of all time. Some people don't want it. They fear this transition because this transition is to a planetary civilization tolerant of many cultures. This transition is also the most important because it's not clear if we're going to make it. So in other words, perhaps they didn't make it in outer space. If one day we have starships and visit other star systems, perhaps we'll find planets whose atmospheres are irradiated or whose atmospheres are too hot to bear life because they did not make the transition from type zero to type one. Now, by the time you're type two, you are immortal. Nothing known to science can destroy a type two civilization. Even a supernova cannot destroy a type two civilization. They'll either move their home planet or they'll simply stop the nuclear fires from exploding. And by the time a civilization becomes galactic, they may in fact have the ability to control the fate of the galaxy itself. By the way, if you're type three, you will explore the galaxy not by sending Captain Kirk on an enterprise hopping from star system to star system. That would take millions of years to explore the Milky Way galaxy. The way you do it 
is you would create a robot. Have the robot land on a moon. It would create a factory. It would make millions of copies of itself on this moon, which is quite stable, and send these to other moons. Then each of these would create another factory. Starting with one robot, you would have a million. Then a million, million, and a million, million, million. Until you had a sphere expanding near the speed of light containing trillions of these robots. They would land on a moon and simply wait. Wait for a type zero civilization to become type one. Now, where have you seen that before? This is the basis of the movie 2001. The movie 2001 is perhaps the most authentic rendition of the encounter of a type zero civilization with a type three civilization. Now at the beginning of the movie, Stanley Kubrick interviewed many leading astronomers and scientists, and we laid out the scenario that the most efficient way to colonize a galaxy is to send robots, have them land on the moon, and create a factory, and then they would shoot out and colonize other moons. But at the last minute, Kubrick cut the first five minutes of his own film, and the film became super mystical. But the next time you see that movie, realize that the monolith on the moon is perhaps a remnant of a passing type three civilization waiting for our type zero civilization to become type one. So again, the generation now alive and our grandchildren are the most important generations ever to walk the surface of the earth. We are the generations that will determine whether we make the transition from type zero to type one, or we destroy ourselves because of our arrogance and our weapons. And many times people say, Professor, you're wrong. You're wrong because the aliens are already here. They're not in outer space. They've already landed with their flying saucers. So I tell them, well, how do you know? And they say, well, they've been kidnapped kidnapped by flying saucers. So if any of you have ever been kidnapped by a flying saucer, for God's sake, steal something. Steal anything. An alien chip, an alien hammer, an alien paperclip, anything so you have bragging rights about going into outer space on a flying saucer.